So, you've just beaten Halo 2. You're probably wondering what comes next. Maybe Halo 3. Maybe a legendary playthrough. If you're feeling tough, you might even attempt a legendary lasso run. But, if you've got balls of steel and a mind of jelly, you'll have something different in mind. Can you beat Halo 2 without taking any damage? Before we take the fight to the Covenant, we've gotta talk about how this run works. I'm not gonna restart the entire game if I take damage. Instead, if I take damage, I reload the most recent checkpoint. Alright? Alright. The Armory is up first. It's actually a waste of time to even be saying these words right now, because there are no enemies in this level. Moving on to Cairo Station, we get our first enemy encounter. Use the barricades as cover and take advantage of the fact that elites can't look down, and you'll be fine. 90 seconds into this level, and we take damage for the first time. The good news is that reverting to the last checkpoint is instantaneous. In general, distance will be our friend throughout this run. The more space between us and an enemy, the better. It gives us a chance to dodge their gunfire and lets us survey the area to make sure that it's clear of enemies. The other option is to overwhelm the Covenant forces with absurd amounts of lead. Dual wielding SMGs are great for this. I'm not going to talk about every enemy encounter. Most situations can be handled with a bit of caution and planning. The first bit that poses any sort of a challenge is when the gunnery sergeant dies. It's where we face our first red elite. They are tougher and can take more damage than your standard elite. Once I took out the blue elite, I lured the red elite down a flight of stairs. His death was assured. If you rush in head first, the drone later in this level can be a real bitch. Sit back, pick them off from a distance, let the marines do their thing, and it'll be easy. Throw a few grenades onto the elevator below, and you're nearly finished. All that's left is to reach the bomb. Lob every grenade you've got at the elites guarding the bomb, take out the remaining enemies, and Cairo Station is complete. Outskirts is next. Take the sniper from Johnson, clear out the courtyard, fail to jump up out of bounds, wait around for more Covenant to arrive, kill them, then successfully jump up onto a rooftop, and a lot of this level is a breeze. Avoid the Covenant ship by running straight for the ghost by the crashed pelican. I tried several times to drive past all the enemies in the next area, but it never worked for me. If you saved the sniper from earlier, it will be easy to take out the enemies in this area, allowing you to move on. The jackals and elites guarding the entrance to the tunnel can actually be avoided by boosting straight past them. The ghost makes quick work of the enemies within, until you get your ass blasted by a warthog and kill yourself out of shame. The few shadows you'll encounter are significantly more annoying. Not really hard, just time consuming, because they're driving away from you while you're shooting at them. One last encampment guards the entrance to the surface. Deal with them, and you're on to Metropolis. I don't think I need to explain how to traverse the bridge. You have a tank, you do tank things with it. I recommend using a beam rifle and a shotgun inside the tunnel. A beam rifle also makes the next area easier. The Goss Hog is ridiculously powerful, but the marine driving it is unpredictable, which isn't great when there's a wraith and several ghosts in a rather confined space. After about 10 minutes of trying to clear the area, I found out there was a rocket launcher on the ground. So, you know, use it. If your Goss Hog is still intact, it can come in handy in the next area. All that's left is to clear the Scarab. This was easily the hardest part so far. After about a dozen attempts, I learned that the Scarab eventually reaches a point where it's blocked by two pelicans. I'd always just immediately jump onto her from the bridge. Wait for it to stop, blast the fuckers with rockets, use the minigun to clear out the top level, then more rockets and grenades to exterminate all life on the lower level, and Metropolis is complete. Next is the Arbiter. Let me tell you a little something about the Arbiter. He's awesome. Master Chief has a flashlight, but Arby's got active camo. I essentially treated all Arbiter levels as stealth levels. The Covenant ship area was a little rough. I'm not sure exactly what it was about that that made it take so long though. I'll just say that it was because all the grunts looked the same. Hashtag not all grunts, or some stupid shit. Kill an enemy or two, engage camo and sit in a corner, and eventually the next area will be cleared. The garbage chutes make four excellent hidey holes. The Banshee section has the potential to be challenging, but if you know where the heretic went, you can avoid all the dogfights and go forward with the level. Land, wait for the cutscene, and the Arbiter is complete. The next level, the Oracle, introduces the Flood. They have several forms, the most annoying of which are the little parasites. You've really gotta pay attention to make sure none of them touch you. 
Here's a tip from a professional Halo player. Get yourself a sentinel beam to deal with the flood. Or, better yet, sit in a corner and do nothing like a little bitch. This is what I've been dreading, the elevator. Surprisingly though, it wasn't all that bad. Just make sure to keep your distance from the sentinels, since they can explode and do damage. Also, try to time it so that you can use your camo when more flood arrive. In the rectangle room, use an energy sword to destroy the flood corpses and sit beneath the upper level so no enemies can drop on you from above. This also ensures that your allies will do most of the fighting. When ascending inside the station, use your camo to avoid enemies and you can activate the cutscene without taking any damage. Use this same strategy when cutting the cords to send the station into freefall. Once you take the elevator back down, try to conserve your ammo for your ranged weapons and your grenades. I didn't, and I had a hell of a time taking out the Flood, Sentinels, and Covenant Traitors to reach the Heretic himself. There are three of them, each with a plasma rifle and jetpacks allowing them to fly around. Everything leading up to this point has been practice. Use your stealth skills and an energy sword to swoop in, take out one of the holograms, then retreat to the shadows. Do it three times, and you'll have killed the Heretic and completed the Oracle. Next is Delta Halo, one of my favorite campaign missions. I ignored the Covenant at the start of the mission and just killed the two Jackals to get myself a Beam Rifle. With a Beam Rifle, I cleared out the Elites and such in the nearby building before getting into a tank to proceed. The tank is powerful as all hell, but slow and not very maneuverable. This becomes a problem when dealing with multiple Ghosts. Outside of a tank, you can sort of dodge the Ghost's fire. You can't do that in a tank which means you've got to move slow and oftentimes stop moving to shoot at a single spot, knowing that the ghosts will cross that path and be destroyed. A lot of this level is just moving forward to see where the enemies will be, then reverting back to preemptively fire at that spot. At one point I ditched the tank and was able to kill all of the jackals and elites in this little courtyard here, but up ahead were four ghosts and an assortment of grunts. With only a single grenade, a battle rifle, and a plasma pistol, there was no way for me to kill them and sneak past them. This forced me to backtrack to get the tank. Slow and steady wins the race, but gets grunt guts all over the place. The next bit was more of the same. Keep taking damage and reverting checkpoints until you can get through the area flawlessly. A pelican dropped off more soldiers and some weapons. I got myself a sniper rifle and a rocket launcher. I chose to sneak through the canyony area rather than trying to fight all the drones and shit. And then, for some reason, I used dual magnums to kill some drones before completing Delta Halo. The next level, Regret, has some fun places to explore if you can use grenade jumps, but those cause damage, so I can't use them. You can jump on some pillars to get on top of a building, giving you a nice vantage point to clear out the elites and jackals. This also skips the hunter fight. With many weapons at your disposal, you can rid the gondola of all life before it even arrives. The drone fight on the gondola can be annoying, but if you take out a few, then hide, they'll leave you alone. The same goes for the enemies on the nearby gondola. Inside the building, I avoided the jackals initially by going up top to snag a fuel rod cannon. I killed the jackals in the pod thingy, and then it was down into the liquid abyss. Before that, I gave my sniper with one shot left to the marine who was accompanying me. The room with the hunters, drones, elites, and jackals was, as you probably guessed, a real pain in the ass. It didn't help that I got a checkpoint in a pretty shitty spot. In front of me were two jackals and a sword elite. Just around the corner were several drones, and the hunters were within shouting distance. One jackal got in another's way, and the elite just sort of fucked off, allowing me to retreat down to a hallway and catch my breath. The situation almost repeated itself once I ran to the other side. Luckily, the marine was there with me and was a good enough distraction to let me snag another checkpoint just before the water room with the camoed elites. Back on the surface, I ran into more problems, probably because I was trying to kill the drones and elites with an energy sword and a shotgun instead of a carbine like I eventually ended up doing. After another gondola ride and about half a century of killing honor guards, I was finally able to fist fuck the prophet and complete regret. Next is Sacred Icon, another Arbiter level, which means a lot of active camo and sitting in corners hoping the Flood don't find me. I did kill an Enforcer after quite a bit of jumping around and throwing grenades. In this sort of a playthrough, this level isn't all that interesting. Walk a little while camoed, sit and wait, walk a bit, maybe shoot some stuff, fall down a hole, then you're outside. I did notice this weird thing that happened with the Sentinel Beam, where the beam wouldn't appear. You can see it being emitted from the weapon and where it's hitting, but not the beam itself. Strange. Outside, some elites arrived as backup so you can fight the Flood. 
One combat form has a rocket launcher, which you can kill and pick up to make quick work of the remaining parasites, and then Sacred Icon is complete. Next is Quarantine Zone, and this level is a bit of a doozy. The first portion, where you make your way forward in a specter, is nothing special. What comes next, though, is an unholy assortment of enforcers, ghosts, wraiths, and other very bad things. Pushing through with the specter is all but impossible. I tried taking a wraith, but an enforcer picked me up and popped me like a pimple. The game expects you to use a vehicle to get through all this shit. I know this because when I didn't, a tank didn't spawn in a specific spot, and then when I got there again with a vehicle, it did spawn. I got lucky and got a checkpoint while hiding with some boxes. Then I boarded a wraith and spent a solid minute spinning in place with it, like I was in a Disney movie. For some reason, my melee attacks did nothing to damage it, so I just ignored it the next time around. More bullshittery was up ahead when my energy sword did nothing against the flood combat forms manning the turrets. I could lunge at them, but my normal swings did nothing. What came next was a whole lot of nothing. It's an auto-scroller sort of section where I sat in a corner for about 4 minutes. Enter the giant flood-infested domicile, watch a cutscene, and Quarantine Zone is complete. The next level is Grave Mind, and boy, do I have some very bad news. The unique thing about this level is that you start in the middle of combat. Rather than finding your way to enemies, you spawn right in front of them as Master Chief sort of teleports into the room. The problem is that by the time you have control over Master Chief, even if it's just a fraction of a second, you've already taken damage. It doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter if you jump, turn around, crouch, change the graphics to play in the original or remastered versions, you'll have taken damage before you can do anything. There's just no way to avoid taking damage during this mission. Which means you cannot beat Halo 2 without taking any damage. But I'm not going to let that deter me. This is just a very minor setback. So I'm going to finish the rest of the game, and hopefully I'll have only taken damage in this one spot. I'll be upfront with you, this level took me about 2 hours to beat. It starts off strong when you have to take down 2 brutes with only a needler. The rest of what the Covenant throws your way isn't much easier. I recommend picking up a carbine off an enemy that drops it, so you can keep some distance between yourself and the bad guys. You'll also want a carbine for the next corridor that's filled with grunts. Don't worry, you'll get more ammo for it before you take your first grav lift ride. Before proceeding, I spent longer than I should have admiring the amazing job 343 did remastering High Charity. It just looks fantastic. A lot of this level is made up of tight spaces and long hallways. A beam rifle, if you can find one, will be your best friend here. The Sleeping Grunt Room was the first part of this level that really challenged me. I found that the easiest way to go forward was to wait for the brutes to pass and then sneak past them. Meleeing the grunts from behind or with a brute shot also works pretty well. Freeing the last group of marines was only annoying because once you open the door, you have no cover from the brutes and jackals inside, aside from the door itself. The brutes and elites are now fighting amongst themselves, which only helps you as you can sit back and let them kill each other before you pick off whoever's left. Cross the light bridges outside, keep to the edges of the nature areas, use an energy sword to take out the elites patrolling the areas, chuck grenades at the door to kill the jackals that are about to enter the room, and soon enough, you'll be in a huge room where brute and elite forces come to a head. You can try to go in guns blazing, but if you wait long enough, all you'll have to do is kill an elite or two. Keep pushing forward, and you'll be able to breathe a sigh of relief, as Gravemind is now complete. Uprising is next, and it's another Arbiter level. Like the other Arbiter levels before it, there's a lot of stealth gameplay here. After you get outside and press onward a bit, there'll be a section where you encounter brutes on a specter. The specter fires plasma at an absurd velocity, making it tough to dodge. Use a beam rifle to kill the gunner as quickly as you can, and everything else will be a cakewalk. It isn't necessary to take out the wraiths, so you can use your camo and sneak right past them. Arm yourself with a rocket launcher, and then become disappointed, as there's nowhere to use it because the level is already over. High Charity is next. Take the shotgun off of Flood Combat Form to make your life easier. Once you enter the area with the drones, sit back by the carbine station and kill as many of them as you can from there. The grav lift leaves you defenseless for a while, so removing the flood before you take the ride is the way to go. You can backtrack a little to get a beam rifle to snipe those drones that are quite far away. I kept the shotgun from earlier through the flood infested areas. The last bit that requires some effort is the sanctified room with those pillars. Throw as many grenades as you can from behind the pillars. Wait for the flood to run to you and blast them with your shotgun. Enter the prophet's chambers, clear out one more area, and high charity is complete. All that's left now is the great journey.
This did not start off the way I'd hoped it would. At the beginning of the level, you're given a wraith and a specter. Neither are particularly great because you're facing multiple ghosts at once. You just aren't maneuverable enough to dodge their shots. So I walked past all that shit. Now there are two wraiths and several brutes to deal with. I tried everything I could think of. I tried stealthily killing the brutes. I tried chucking four grenades at a single wraith. I tried stunning the wraiths with a plasma pistol. None of it worked. While I was off having my own adventures, the other elites had taken out the ghosts. So what I did was take the wraith and fire away at the other wraiths from a safe distance until I finally killed them all and could enter the building. By this point, I was already 25 minutes into the level. The next few sections can be bypassed with active camo. The little jackal bridge is best dealt with using grenades. Now comes the banshee section, and let me tell you, I fucked up. After a few minutes of trying to stay with the scarab, I decided to ditch the banshee and just ride on the scarab until we reached the door. Luckily, there's a banshee on the ground near where the scarab stops. Falling from the scarab will kill you though, so you can't wait for it to stop completely. There's a protrusion coming from the wall, and you've got to land on it just right. Meleeing with a brute shot in midair propels you forward enough to survive the landing without taking any damage. Active camo past the brute, take the banshee, keep low to the ground to avoid other banshees in the sky, and wait for Johnson to blast the door open. The brutes inside can easily be avoided. We're at the end now. Deal with Tartarus and the game is over. The fight with Tartarus was not what I expected. Avoiding his hammer is really not all that difficult. The hardest part is that your window to attack is slim. I used a brute shot until it ran out of ammo and finished him off with a carbine. And with that, we have not beaten Halo 2 without taking any damage. Almost every single obstacle in the game can be cleared without taking damage, except for the beginning of Gravemind. This was a ton of fun to do and I recommend it to anyone thinking about playing Halo 2 again. It adds a different type of challenge than Legendary or the Skulls do. And that is going to do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Halo 2 without taking any damage. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter at MittenSquad. My name is Paula of MittenSquad. I'm well aware how nasally my voice sounds. Have a wonderful day.